Uncle and Lonnie. Uncle and Tim. I'm not a long. He looked up to ninety, he only ninety six or ninety seven. Well, she said, I'm not sure. I know. Have you confirmed the signal? Not here.
In my own okay, let's know. Maybe it is this one I Okay. 
Okay. 
If, see, if this thing fixes automatically, it should go Okay, so I want to look like... Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, but the, the preachers are...
softly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Patiently, Jesus is waiting, waiting for you and for me. Come home, come home. If you are weary, come home. Endlessly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, come home. On page seven.
And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four wings of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty, and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of God were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Asa were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Nebali were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Esau were sealed twelve thousand, of the tribe of Zebulun, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin, were sealed twelve thousand. After this, I beheld, and though a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the land, clothed with white robe and hands in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne and unto the land. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And when came they, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and that seated on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light of them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. If God wipes away all tears from our eyes, 
and give us joy in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Father, we appreciate you for this hour. We thank you for bringing us together to celebrate the good life of Prophet Shulayim. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. God, we pray for the family of Prophet Shulayim that he has left behind, that you will take care of them in the name of Jesus. We pray for the children that you will not care after the death of the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Whenever you lay hands upon, I pray that the host will never be supported with it in the name of Jesus. We pray for the friends and relatives of Papa, that wherever you might be on the face of the head, testimony shall not cease in your mouth in Jesus' name. I pray for everybody that come here today, for the love that you have and the respect that you want to pay for, the, for this man, let she, Dr. J.T. Shulay. And I pray that God will compensate you personally in the name of Jesus. And the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon each and every one of us, and the consonants shine upon our life, and give us good life so that we can attain the kingdom of heaven. So shall it be in the name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. I brought <laughs>
hope we create a nothing else for Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest prayer, the holy name of Jesus' name. I try the solid rock and stand, all other ground is sitting sand. Name of the pen of the perfect beloved.
the second lesson for today, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears peace for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who will stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Let us rise and pray for the church. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of the church, which is Jesus' establishment on earth, which also is the gateway to salvation and the gateway to heaven. We thank you for the graces you have given to this church and for keeping your church to stand firm on the rock of ages. And upon your church, we are all of us belong as their children, and you receive glory and honor and that's given an adoration in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we also pray now for the leaders of the church. Continue to give them that kind of wisdom that you gave to Solomon, that they may continue to lead their people aright. May they continue to lead their children spiritually to greener pastures. May you give them an established authority like you gave to Peter, like you gave to Moses, so that with this staff of office as leaders of the church, they will continue to lead their people aright. They will continue to be strengthened so that in turn they will strengthen the brethren. So pray, O Lord, for all your children who belong to the church, especially all of us that are here. May we continue to be strengthened in your name. And may all the efforts we put up in the church not be in vain. And even for uh, Baba, whom we are gathered here for today, who has also put in his own effort in this church, may his efforts not be in vain. And rather, let it be the way also to salvation. And also, but we pray that as we continue to cherish your church, may he continue to be for us a way to salvation, a way to joy, a way to honor, a way to gladness, and a way to multiple testimonies. And this is our prayer in the name of Jesus. The message today is the great thing. Uh, Jesus gave me near the cross. There, the precious fountain. Straight in the of the hidden state. Flow for a thousand mountains. In the cross, in the cross, in my glory heaven. In my rapture soul shall find rest in one in river. Amen.
kota uh, aku tuh itu kemana dia di di Jawa itu aku tuh di Jawa dengan dia itu udah waktu aktif maka dia itu alright okay this is what I'm going to do so that uh, we will not uh, take much of our time alright okay uh, so that we will not take much of our time I'm going to ask somebody to talk from the neighborhood of Papa. I want to see Ajia Allah can play with Papa. And we are at the group of Papa. That is all the time. We need to play with Papa. We should be there. I want to see Ajia Allah can see Chef Kofi Mori. And we can see Chef Mori. We should be there. And we can see Ajia Allah can see Chef Kofi Mori. And we can see Chef Kofi Mori. Uh, then uh, I would also like to call the team to call up the new glory at the GFB not the Toki and I would call Sandoji okay so we can wait for my team and then we can wait for my team and then we can wait for my team and then we can wait for my team so please let me start with the team Praise the Lord. My name is Kola Ogori. Me Kulu Ole Kuta. Papa and my father are brothers from different mothers. And if you are here, and you want to know that my father and Papa Shule are brothers, you probably really, really know me. I want to quickly talk about Papa. First, as a medical doctor, I want to talk about him as a father and then as a role model. When I was young, I was very sick. So, no wonder that I was mandated to be the one to talk about Papa. So I always had reason to see him to go to the hospital and all of that. Right up to the time that I was in form two. And Papa took great care of me. Then Papa has been known in the Rubani family. Papa was the only one that called my mother like, okay. So he still he till my mother died and called my father by his first name. Papa was always as straight as an arrow. He was well alternative father. Papa was the alternative father that we in the Rubori family know. In the Koka family. My sister is here. Very red man in her last post. Papa was the chairman at her wedding. Now let me talk about Papa as in Papa to us. When my father died, that same week, Inka was ordained as a Methodist church in Shagam. I was boasting that I need my mama to be dancing. Fast forward five minutes, and then Papa should be ashamed of me and print my egg. Because now we have Papa and we stood there as Papa for her and for all of us on that day. I want to say talk again about I you know I had my last born when I was forty five, so I was a very old nursing mother. One day my husband looked out and said, "It looks like there's a car here. Are you expecting a visitor?" I said, "No." Said, "Papa, should I be alone, boy?" I looked, and lo and behold, Papa came. This was after my mother died. Again, Papa showed up as Papa. My younger brother, who is here, Bonako, when he had his first child, that first child came on Papa's birthday. So we in the Koka family are really blessed because every time we celebrate Jaye's birthday, we will be remembering Papa. And the boy was named Jaye. Jonathan Koka. My father had never given any of his children an English name. So when he told me that 
My father got imported that name and gave it to Jamu. Finally, on the day that Papa died, the next morning, my brother Fulai called me and he said, Auntie Buki, you don't start. I said, Papa Shuleye is dead. I said, ah. The next statement he made was, he was a fantastic man. And I tried to up his definition and tried to look for a better word. I couldn't. I know that you all here are enlightened and, you know, more educated than us. So maybe I should give you the homework to find a better word. I tried to look for a better word, short of being tried or the guilty of tautology. But today, I want to end by saying that we are all here, the privilege and the honor to give a tribute to a man that we all consider fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, can I have uh, the name of this? The name of this place. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am looking at your song. I live directly opposite Papa's house. And his children and those who come often, they call me Papa's babe. Uh, it's a privilege to be here talking about Baba because in the brevity of the time, that I have known him. Um, the lady who spoke before me called him fantastic, and I think that word is not wrongly used. Papa was a good man. He, he knew how to bring everyone together. Whenever we have meetings, he may not come, but he would call me, he would ask um, the lady to call me and ask about details of what was said, and what was done at the meeting. We decided, after Baba's um, 93rd birthday, we went to him and said, ah, Baba, but you should stop paying monthly dues, security dues, that we are your children, that we will pay. He now said, he laughed and said, no way, that till his last day he will pay. I believe that deserves a round of applause. Not only would Baba pay his bills, he would come and said, uh, he would send uh, her and say that I should bring the records. He would say, Shane, you Jehu. I laugh. Oh, what well, if Baba said Jehu for me? <laughs> you know, so we'll take the records to him. And he Always, always pays in advance. The Baba has paid till the end of the year, as we speak. Whenever we, from my house especially, when we hold a party and we have guests come over, I just go to Baba and say, ah, Baba, we're having a party and say, That was what he always would say, okay, Olu Alonile, come and pack your time, my compound so that there will be no more traffic jam and all that. Baba, Baba, so I feel old speaking about Baba in past days. Honestly, I feel old, but it, it is what it is. Baba will be just, it was so accommodating, very kind-hearted, very jovial with children. In the brevity of the time that I knew him, indeed, Baba Shuleye, it was fantastic. Thank you. You guys keep listening to the questions. All right, then. Can I have a welcome? 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 Thank you. Our name is Shadow.
2020, and I was privileged to meet Papa in 1985. He was the chairman of Health Aid Limited and later the chairman of Groups. I just joined Health Aid Limited. For a young man, freshly out of graduate school, and newly married. Health Aid Limited, as it was then, was a great place, a dream place to start work. And I was privileged to be working there under his leadership. He was easily a role model, even as I entered. And the first thing out of the many lessons I learned from him was discipline. As chairman, board of directors, I learned that a meeting called for 10 o'clock means all the members sitting down at 10 and the chairman welcoming them exactly at 10 o'clock. And that perpetuated throughout the six years I spent under his tutelage. Unlike what you have today, when high-ranking public officials come to meetings one hour or two hours late and do not even apologize to anybody. Papa was always well turned out, impeccably dressed. The fabrics were not necessarily expensive, Although for him, most of the time they were. Showing that the way first impressions count very much. He was always in The third lesson I learned from him was respect for others. He never called any of us by our first names. He called us Mr. Kutsoibo and in Yoruba, he uses air for you. He used air for elders. And when he needed any one of us, he would go straight to our head of department, ask for permission. Or if he couldn't come, he will write. And when we finish with him, he will write a thank you. These are very essential lessons learned early in professional life. I had very few opportunities of personal interactions with him. But I remember one quite vividly. He was chairman of Booth. He was going for the meeting and he asked me to take a ride with him in his car. And he just told me generally about the issues going to be discussed and took one of the issues and said, if you are confronted with this, what are you going to do? And by the time we got to Booth, we have looked at four options, different options. And we have reached consensus on how to address three of the options. So from him, I learned scenario building and all good lessons. Now I must say that these are lessons that have, that have populated with children, all of them. But I'd like to single out and thank Dr. Sule Sule. He gave all of us fantastic opportunities, learning in a great environment, exposure to international best practices, and I can only, on behalf of all of us who are here and who are not here, that we wish Papa so to rest in perfect peace and the Lord Almighty to comfort all your children and loved ones. Thank you. 40. Thank you, sir. You can have the member of the family. The children, the immediate family. Who's green? The member of the family. Yes, ma'am. The CCC, this fellow. Oh, okay. I think. What's funny about what Uncle said was just how much he summed up who Grandpa was. Very precise, 
um, my earliest memories are of him saying that children should be seen and not heard when we would be running around and um, very proper. But at the same time, extremely beautiful. And I think that's probably the word that would sum up my grandfather. Um, always the first to get to your events, always so happy to support whatever it was. Um, that you are doing. I have so many memories of, you know, getting to church and him being the first person sitting in the pew waiting for the ceremony to start, and of letters and notes. Um, you know, this the art of the um, the written form is something that has obviously fallen by the wayside quite a bit now with technology. But he was um, a very very good letter writer, and. Um, an extremely diligent uh, letter writer and a very good correspondent. So that particular sense of appreciation, and I think there was also a very mischievous sense of humor. So I can, Grandpa had, Grandpa and Granny actually had this cackle that they would do, you know, when something funny had happened. And I still have memories of both of them you know, chuckling over something one of the children had done or some scrape or the other. So I think the probably the best tribute or the best way to sum a life of purpose, a life of service, a life, a life of duty, um, in a way that perhaps subsequent generations perhaps don't take those things quite as um, importantly. So we were very privileged to, to have had such a fantastic example. There are very few places you go, especially in the medical field, anywhere you are. Um, I've had so many messages from even friends of mine who are medics. I mean, so those are literally his grandchildren saying, oh, I didn't know that was your grandfather. Oh, wow, you know, what a wonderful legacy. And that's something that we are all very, very grateful to the Almighty for, very grateful for his life. His, um, for the love that we have shared. And I'm um, very grateful to all of you today, especially for coming um, here in the middle of a pandemic, no less, to celebrate this life with us. Um, and yes, I mean, duty, purpose, and service. That was my grandfather. Thank you. Thank you. Because Instead of schooling again, and yes, she takes his lawyer, so lay again. After you get here, oh, I wait for two, two, you know, now, it was just our one, you know, 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 you
And you also the use of words to accumulate, to put your words into action. Maybe because you know that you've done that. Blessed in your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to speak from the book of Luke chapter number 16. Luke chapter number 16, verse 19 through 31. I'm not going to uh, take our time in reading the entire passage. I'm going to give us the highlight of the uh, the message in this particular uh, passage. Luke chapter number 16. This is the story of uh, the story that Jesus Christ gave of Lazarus and the rich man. Now, what I want to pick out of it is is that this story really makes us to understand that one, there is heaven and there is hell. For those that do not believe that there is heaven and hell, this story makes us to believe, makes us to know there is heaven and there is hell. I want you to know that this is not a parable. My God did not say that and Jesus told them a parable. It is not a parable. It is a real life event because it's only Jesus Christ that has come from heaven that knows what has happened in heaven and I can tell you what, what's happened in heaven. So it's a real life event. So it means that there is heaven and there is hell. Two, the second thing I want us to know that it is not the availability of riches or wealth or lack of it. That will make you that will determine whether you make heaven or hell. Majority of people, when they read this story, they believe that it's because the man is rich, that's why he went to hell. No. At least Abraham, Bible says he was rich in tattoos, in silver, in gold, in male servants, and in female servants. In fact, Abraham was richer than the rich man that we, that we we're talking about here. And Abraham was there in heaven. So it is not about the availability of riches. But the lack of it that will qualify you to go to heaven or to hell. It is not because Lazarus was poor that was why he went to heaven. In fact, I always pray the prayer I don't want to be like Lazarus. Never. He was poor here on heaven. He's also a second class citizen in heaven. Ever since he's at the bosom of Abraham, of the Hebrew. It means that Abraham is his landlord. Let's put it that way. He's a tenant in Abraham's house. Poor man on earth. He went to heaven to see a poor man. I want to live a life of Abraham. I want to enjoy the fullness of life here on earth and also be a landlord here in heaven. So it's not about whether the man is poor. And so you need know, some, some people used to preach that message. They said, ah, for you to be a Christian, if you are rich, you are not a Christian. Ah, that is it. It will be difficult for a rich man. You know, just to get camel, it will be difficult for camel to pass through the straight gate. Who told you? If Jesus, if I can say that Jesus Christ left all his riches in heaven and he became poor, so that I, Jacob, I can't get a lot of everywhere in the coast, will be rich. Then it will be a sin. Is that thing that we now need to think? There is something in the life of the rich man. Although the Bible was silent about his character, but it's deep. But there is something about the life of this poor man, this, this Lazarus, that makes everyone to recognize his name. And the rich man was not named in this world. You will notice that the name of that rich man was not named. Nobody is just a rich man, a certain rich man. In fact, his riches does not even, is not enough to buy the name of him in heaven. With all the graduates of his wealth, he couldn't bribe his way through the angels to get his name for himself. 
to the to the fact they ever recorded him as a certain rich man. It's something that we need to look at, and that is the the plea that this rich man made for the he said, please, send a letter of somebody down to my, I have five brethren. At least he's not selfish. When he goes to hell, he doesn't want his, his, his brother to come and make him here. At least I give him that to So, which means that, in a way, he's a moralist. But being a moralist will not take you to heaven. And then, please send to my five brethren so that they will know. They will see something that I did not see. They will know this thing that I did not know. And the reply that Abraham gave is there is Moses and other prophets. If they cannot believe them, then even if anybody comes from the death, they will not believe. Whether it is false or it is true, I cannot ascertain it. But there are several times that so many people have come out to say that they, they, they were dead for three days or four days or something, and they will come to different stories. And the most actually to be what you say. In fact, you can see that I'm even paying some kind of doubt for me because some of them are the lie. That's just the same way it is. Because if we see people that say that they will be like, let's confirm it. Let's prove it. The message is there. No more coming to the Father. It is not about being a moralist. I'm sorry if you are believing in the Roman Catholic that says you are listening. I'm sorry. No Christ, no heaven. Pure. If you don't have understanding to follow. The steps of Christ, no heaven. If you cannot accept him as your Lord and Pastor Savior and keep to his commandment and his ordinances, no heaven. And a lot of people might begin to say, we are under the era of grace. So we can do whatever we like. Remember, even the preacher of grace, the man that preached grace, he said, say, shall we continue and sing and say grace you are bound? No, we can't keep it up. A lot of people will tell you, you know, those laws are the heralds of the Old Testament. But when they say, Abraham, blessings are mine, they will raise up their hands and say, hey, man, I claim it. And talk what to it. They are forgotten that Abraham, but you don't have a The fact that you are the hero of grace does not mean that we should continue in sin. What grace has come to do is to empower us so that we can live a righteous life without the struggle. But it just becomes a nature. The moment that God said, that God has made us understand, we are now a new creature. So, the moment you accept Jesus Christ, you become a you, and you accept the ability to live a natural life that is righteous. Because the righteousness of Christ Jesus will be in that. So, you will not need to struggle to be a righteous man. That is what grace has come to do for us. So, are you willing to accept that Jesus Christ as the Lord and Pastor and Savior? Because let me tell us the truth, including myself. If Jesus carries the second coming, every one of us will explain this expression. Every single one of us. If Jesus carries, there will be a day 
and we'll close our hearts to this act. And the people will gather. They will give testimonies like the feeling of a past day. I know I was watching to hear any, anybody that say, ah, Papa is, is very, he's a disciplinarian. You know, that's the word that uh, when you want to, when, you know, people will not tell you that the father is wicked. When they want to give testimonies, but they was not, they not say that that man, a very strict man and a disciplinarian that's trying to tell you that that man is wicked. So we thank God that we don't have a very strict this is the Moses another prophet that is giving you this message today. You have no excuse. In fact, even in God, say ignorance of the law is not an excuse. But we are not ignorant anymore now because the word that we preach to us that Jesus is the way, the truth. No more for me, Father. Are you willing to serve him? First, have in us with his understanding, serve Jesus. As well, it is time. It is time. And you also willing to serve us with everything. And we just got that there. I'm talk to you right now. Lord, I am willing. Stop me. I appreciate you as I said it was very important to me and we know why it starts to be. I appreciate you. In Jesus, my name, we pray. And so Father, thank you for your word this evening. Thank you because we are willing and we know that you will grace us enough to be able to follow you to the end of our life. Thank you so much for the salvation of our soul. For what you've done, the complete job that you did on the cross. To be thank you, Jesus, for everything. Blessed be your holy name. Give us strength to walk in this understanding. Give us, give us ability to walk all through our life in this understanding. That your name will be glorified in our life forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, let me start with this. Back to give your kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me tell you what I need to give all this explanation. It's not an excuse. I'm just giving it as an explanation to us. So this is not to give you your friends. We have made arrangements. In fact, I got to the office this morning, in the special for going out. Came back, and the person that is in charge of the conference of everything that is serious, nowhere to be found, the key, the page, nowhere is full, so getting through and everything. I was just surprised. I was half the time, I was looking at so many things, calculating in my head. And uh, I had to quickly make a little uh, adjustment, which gave birth to this that is in our head. This is what we normally use. This gave to this in our head, and which also um, results into the chapter areas of the sea. Days we have to rush it this evening and come around all those things. And in fact, coming in and seeing us 
not be able to get myself to get into person. This was in God's eyes. I said, um, not the less, I still want to take responsibility for everything. And I want to say, I'm so sorry for having to keep you waiting for like 20 to 22 minutes. And also, that is um, what you are seeing. Please find it in your heart to forgive us. Please. I hope I'm forgiven. If there's one person that will forgive me in this place, I know it's my mom. Because my wife is my wife. <laughs> I have a good papa there that you know that we, we are spending this woman. Like, she's too beautiful for only me to be married now. I was in her heart. And I, told papa, I used to tell papa there that, ah, thank, thank God for yourself, bro. If I have been born in your days, ah. <laughs> but we thank God. So I feel so that mama. And because of my mind, I don't want to accept that. Right. So I'm very, very sorry. I also want to appreciate the men of God because they protect us in organizing this program. I want to quickly really appreciate the very, very, very you in town for Mark Boston for the Methodist Church of India. Thank you very much, Mark. God bless you. God bless you, man. Um, I also want to appreciate the Reverend Father Wilfred Mwatiku of St. Louis Catholic Church in Georgia. Thank you, Father. So we appreciate your presence. We uh, really, really, really appreciate your presence in the the Lord was to be with you in Jesus' name. All right, I also want to appreciate my hip assistant here. Um, that is Reverend Ola Lokiti Adebaju. He's the one directing our Agnes Church at the Manuel Chapel, which is the church under the church. God bless you so much. The Lord was to be with you in Jesus' name. Uh, the man will say that ah, he did the shape to live power without the project. Which means that uh, because you have a soul and it is, it is my own, it is on my leg, now you need to cross over the food that you want to eat. So before, because of the, I'm also one of Papa's son now, I don't care, but I don't mean I will not appreciate myself. <laughs> I will have to appreciate myself too. I want to appreciate myself. I am the very good Jacob or more Kenny, the deck or no water in the way. You go soon. The reason why I used to give you that long name is that all time I was to know that Kenny Dick is not the amazing. Or more Kenny, the old guy, more that is the good name. That's why I know that name. So, if you have anything, always let them know that can be. So, he's the one that comes back out of the two. Because he, he is very good at like, us up the But for us, yes, he's sending us some time. And I need to tell my friend that I'm not, I'm not his mate. So, uh, I'm at the time of what I have to pick up at the African church. Emmanuel Parish, which is number one to us at the hospital in Jayoka. Thank you so much. So, because I said, I need a lot of time to say, that's why it's Please put your hands together for me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the moment. Because I hope I appreciate everybody that is here. We really, really appreciate us for having to spare your time to come and follow Papa. Uh, I know that uh, the family will be taking uh, the remains of Papa and the seven is coming tomorrow, I think so. But I know that uh, the service will continue in our park, for our state. I think we'll be having a quick service on Thursday. Wednesday, and then will be on Thursday. 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 Thursday.
On behalf of the Shulaye family, I say thank you to our Reverend Ekuza. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sparing the time and conducting the service. To our brothers and sisters who have taken the time off to come here to this service of songs to pay respect to our departed father, Chief Dr. Jonathan Udo Jaye Shuleye, we say a big thank you. As you go home, may the Lord go with you. Our Father lived a ripe old age in good health, and that is our prayer for each and every person here today. May it be so in Jesus' name. As we've been told, we depart tomorrow with his remains to bury him where he has chosen to be buried. It is home town of Ofa, for our state. So, okay. Oh, sorry about that. As for the past, tomorrow to go to Ofa to bury you where he has requested to be buried, we need you all to hold us in your prayers that Johnny Mercies will go safely, even befitting funeral and come back safely. Amen. And by the grace of God Almighty, our desire and our wish to celebrate his life in a more condensing atmosphere where COVID has finally packed his back globally, we shall all sit and once again rejoice over his life. Amen. Thank you very much. I deliver you. I remember you. I go yai. Thank you very much, ma'am. Let us all put our feet and bow our heads as we pray. Oh, <laughs>